The secret to flying faster than anything ever before lies within the four corners of Hermes. Somehow, this startup out of Atlanta, Georgia, backed by the U.S. Air Force, is building an aircraft that entire government agencies around the world have been unable to. Quarter Horse is a small 40-meter-long aircraft that will prove Hermes's futuristic engine works as it should. This engine is known as Chimera, and powered by it, Quarter Horse will go faster than any aircraft in history. In the process, it must break the speed records of the legendary SR-71 Blackbird. The SR-71 is the fastest jet of all time and has remained the yardstick for hypersonic travel for almost half a century, thanks to a recorded top speed of Mach 3.3. Quarter Horse will hit Mach 5 and beyond. In January, Hermes completed the first main stage of building a hypersonic quarter horse. A series of tests that began in late 2023 had finally been completed. These tests included extensive ground testing of the quarter horse in its dynamic iron bird form, which is code for a ground-based test rig used to prove various systems and their integration. This stage of the aircraft development is purely fixed on testing the ground-based part of the aircraft's operations. So, the dynamic Iron Bird, named Quarter Horse MK0, which featured only crucial test components for the test, was a cost-effective yet comprehensive enough prototype to cover this stage of testing. The tests took place at the Air Force's Arnold Engineering Development Complex in Tullahoma, Tennessee. Hermes chose to do the testing here since it allowed the team to interface directly with regulatory authorities and the Air Force. The Air Force has been crucial to Hermes' growth over the years. In August 2020, the company received a $1.5 million contract from the Air Force to develop their proposed aircraft as a possible Air Force One that transports the U.S. President in the future. In August 2021, a jointly funded Air Force contract saw Hermes receive another $60 million in funding. Hermes currently develops the Quarter Horse as a developmental system for a military jet called Dark Horse. After Dark Horse, the company will develop the Halcyon, a hypersonic commercial airliner. Halcyon will be the completion of Hermes's original dream, which is commercial flight for civilians. Currently, though, Hermes is still two aircraft away from this dream as it works on building the Quarter Horse. Quarter Horse MK0, used in recent tests, has successfully been used for validating systems, demonstrating remote command and control taxiing, and demonstrating human factor evaluations and pilot-in-the-loop steering and controls, among others. With the successful MK0 tests comes MK1, the first flight vehicle. MK1 will be used for remote takeoff and landing trials and is not apparently planned to trial high-speed flight. It is already under construction and is expected to fly later this year. Then there's MK2, the flight vehicle intended to reach supersonic speeds below Mach 3. And finally, MK3, which will demonstrate Chimero's turbojet to ramjet mode transition in flight, hit speeds beyond Mach 3, and break the all-time airspeed record held by the SR-71. But it's more than breaking a record for Hermes, the Air Force, and the hypersonic aircraft that connects them. The U.S. Air Force has once put the hypersonic speed of the SR-71 to great use in surpassing its rivals. With Russia, China, North Korea, Iran, and many other rivals challenging for global dominance once again, the U.S. finds itself once again in a dire need for speed. Remember how speed makes aircraft invisible. Let's start with an example of it. The SR-71 was famously capable of sustaining speeds in excess of Mach 3 for extended periods as it cut through the sky at altitudes of 85,000 feet or higher. Thanks to this combination of speed and altitude, the jet outran more than 4,000 missiles fired at it across its three decades of service. It was never shot down. In fact, the aircraft had no weapons at all. It didn't need them. Once fired at, it could easily accelerate to speeds that make missiles look slow and bullets even slower. 
The SR-71 was fully retired by 1999, and along with it, the U.S. Air Force's unrivaled ability to outfly threats. However, even if the SR-71 were in service today, it wouldn't be fast enough to outrun today's threats. In nations around the world, particularly Russia and China, hypersonic missiles have become a thing. Although the United States is also working on hypersonic missiles of her own, those of Russia and China are rumored to be far ahead in development. In fact, they are already in service. Russia's Kinjal and Zircon hypersonic missiles have both been used in the ongoing war in Ukraine. The Kinjal entered service in December 2017. After launch, the Kinjal accelerates to a flight ceiling of 66,000 feet and a top speed of Mach 12 en route to its target, performing maneuvers every step of the way to evade air defense systems. The Kinjal has a maximum range of 1,200 miles and usually lands within one meter from its target. On impact, the Kinjal, with a 1,100-pound warhead, releases more than 16.9 gigajoules of kinetic energy, or the equivalent of 8,800 pounds of TNT. On March 18, 2022, one month after the Russo-Ukraine war began, a Kinjal missile struck Ukraine. The Zircon, which entered service only last year, is even more modern and more advanced than the Kinjal. The winged maneuverable missile with a lift-generating center body has an air-breathing design. Here, a booster stage with solid-fuel engines accelerates the missile to supersonic speeds, after which a scramjet motor with liquid fuel accelerates it to a peak altitude of 92,000 feet and hypersonic speeds up to Mach 9. On impact, the Zircon strikes its target with 4,700 pounds of TNT. On February 7th last year, a Zircon missile struck a building in Ukraine. The damage was devastating. Then comes China with its YJ-21, Xinkong-2, and Dongfeng-17, the slowest of which moves at speeds greater than Mach 5. Up against these missiles from China and Russia, neither air defenses nor the SR-71 would stand a flying chance. This necessitates the hunt for something new and fast. Very fast. Defense contractors around the world have tried to come up with this something, many of which have failed. And of those that haven't, Hermia stands tall as a lead candidate with its really unique fleet of aircraft. But what makes them so unique? Well, hypersonic today means going at least a mile a second. That's around the entire planet in less than seven hours. Achieving such speeds is more than just going faster. It's about breaking a barrier. And to break this barrier, science fiction may have to become reality. None of the turbojet engines powering fighter jets and planes today can push an aircraft from stationary to hypersonic. Hermes has had to build a brand new turbine-based combined cycle engine, a TBCC engine for short. This TBCC engine is known as Chimera, and Chimera changes everything. You see, various types of jet engines have been built over the years, each one best suited in specific situations. There is the turbojet engine, which powers jets today. It accelerates jets from their stationary position to subsonic and even supersonic speeds. This engine has a fan that sucks in air at whatever speeds and then squeezes that air with a compressor. The compressed air is then mixed with fuel and ignited, similar to how a piston compresses the air-fuel mixture in a car. The ignited air-fuel mixture pushes out the back of the engine as propulsion and accelerates the jet to subsonic or supersonic speeds. Then there are the ramjets and scramjets, identical but somewhat different. These engines have no fan or compressor. They rely on the immense pressure of air flowing into the inlet and around a cone for compression. Basically, they ram into incoming high-pressure air to create compression. After compression, this air is mixed with fuel and ignited to produce thrust and accelerate the jet to hypersonic speeds. But there's a problem. The immense pressure these engines require for compression can only be realized at speeds greater than Mach 3. So, light bulb moment. If a turbojet engine can accelerate a jet from stationary position to supersonic speeds up to Mach 3, and a ramjet or scramjet operates efficiently from Mach 3, 
Then a turbojet engine can be employed to accelerate a jet in the initial stages of its flight up to Mach 3, and then a ramjet or scramjet can take over from there to accelerate the jet to hypersonic speeds. This is the concept behind TBCC engines, and it is the magic behind how Hermes's Chimera works. To date, the Chimera is the closest a TBCC engine has gotten to operational status. Most hypersonic platforms today are powered by a rocket engine which makes reusability almost impossible. By making a full-range, air-breathing hypersonic engine like Chimera, which does not require a rocket to accelerate, Hermes is setting the stage for actual, regular, practical hypersonic flight for both the U.S. Air Force and for you. The future has always belonged to those brave enough to take it. Hermes is one of the bravest yet. Within its walls, aircraft that travel at more than five times the speed of sound are taking shape. Whether for military purposes, civilian purposes, or both, such aircraft have the potential to change aviation forever. To honor these aircraft, Hermes asks that you give this video a like and subscribe to this channel. So do that now! And thanks for watching!